Well, hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Illustrator tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we're gonna take a look at creating this really cool glass planet illustration effect. It was inspired by this really cool piece of artwork I saw over on a dribble. I've got a link whoop, right down there in the bio. Uh, go show the artist some love. It's a really, really cool uh, work of art that he's created and I'm doing sort of my best rip off of it and covering some of the tips and tricks and techniques uh, that I've kind of came to use along the way. Uh, if you do enjoy this tutorial, think about hitting the subscribe button. Maybe wait a couple minutes. Make sure you actually like the tutorial, right? And then just keep it there in the back of your mind as you're watching this video. If you think Think it's good go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you never miss any future adobe illustrator tutorials and ladies and gentlemen let's jump in and get this thing started all right well here we go in adobe illustrator let's get this thing kicked off by going file new and create a new file and uh we're going to go with 2560 by 1440 um, i'm working in the rgb uh color mode but you can work in zmyk if you want i'm gonna go ahead and create my document now, the first thing we're going to do here is create a background. So I'm going to select my stroke. It's going to open the color panel. I don't really need that. I'm going to hit the little slash icon to just get rid of the stroke. And then I'm going to click the fill and, and I'm going to go with 0606 uh, 2B, which is just this super dark purpley blue color. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool, click a single time and say, hey, you know what? Our document's 2560 by 1440. So we're going to slap that background right in there. And very quickly, we'll go window and open up the align panel here real quick. And we'll just align this guy horizontally and vertically. And I'll probably name the layer something like BG for background. And before we lock it up, we're going to create a little glow for the center of this. Using the ellipse tool, click a single time. The height of our document is 1440, so I want a simple 1440 by 1440 ellipse. Hit OK. Again, I probably should have left the align panel open, right? We're going to align this guy horizontally and vertically as well. Now, we're going to fill this with a gradient. So I'm going to select my fill here in the properties panel. I'm going to go with the black to white gradient. I'm going to select gradient options, which is going to pop open my gradient panel here. I'm going to swap this to a radial gradient. I'm going to select the black color stop. In fact, I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to slide all my RGB sliders all the way up to white, just like that. Then I'm going to select opacity and set it to zero. I can close up the gradient panel and I'm going to select the word opacity here and I'm just going to change the blend mode to overlay. You can see we have this beautiful little glow here in the middle of our background, just like that. We can now lock up that background layer and go ahead and create a new layer where we will create our artwork. So I'll name the layer something like, you know, artwork. That makes sense, right? And I'm going to grab my ellipse tool and we're going to begin by creating the base of our planet, which is going to be a 580 by 580 pixel ellipse and hit OK. Now for this particular shape, I'm going to hit the letter D, which is going to reset my foreground at, well, my fill and my stroke, I should say. I'm used to working in Photoshop, um, my fill and my stroke. And I want to get rid of the fill. In fact, I just want this to be a white stroke. We're going to create as much of the line art as we can, and then we'll go ahead and add all the colors and really make it look awesome. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll hit the little arrow to swap my fill and stroke and then just hit the little slash to get rid of the fill now a one point stroke a little difficult to see so let's just boom, bump it up to two points just like that and what i'll do is i'm going to go window align maybe i'll leave the align panel open for a short while here so let's go ahead and just align horizontally and vertically and uh there we go of course now that i have the align panel open i'm sure not to need it for the rest of the tutorial but better safe than sorry I'm going to go ahead and open up this layer and you can see i've got this ellipse i want to duplicate it twice so i'm going to go edit copy and then choose edit paste in front and edit paste in front. That pastes it exactly in place. And I'm going to name the top one here shine and I'm going to shut that layer off. We're going to come back to that later and I'm going to name the second one base and I'm also going to shut that off. We'll also come back to that later. Now we're going to select our visible ellipse here and we're going to offset this path. So I'm going to go object path and choose offset path. So I'm going to say, look, bump this inward 15 pixels. So we're going to say negative 15 pixels on the offset path. You can see we've got a second path now. We're going to select that inner path. We're going to do that same copy paste in front game. And I'm going to name this, I'll name it something like low yellow. We're going to use this later as well. So I'm going to shut that off and we're going to need a second copy of that inner stroke. So I can just go edit paste in front because it's still copied to my clipboard. You can see there it is. And I'm going to hit shift and the letter X. That's going to swap the stroke and the fill. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this white circle. We're going to copy it, edit, copy. And we're going to say, look, paste it right in front. And then up here in the transform section of my properties panel with the topmost path selected, I'm going to make a couple changes here. I am going to say, look, a 1280 pixels on the X is where this is sitting. I'm going to say, you know what, subtract 100 pixels from that. And you can see it just bumps it to the left, 100 pixels. And then here for the Y, I want to move it upward. So I'm going to subtract maybe 50 from the Y, something like that. And you can see we now have these two overlapping circles. What I'll do is I'll hold down shift and select the other white filled circle. And you can see here in the properties panel, I've got some pathfinder options. I'm going to hit this subtract or minus front, as we can see, it's called the minus front to just 
reserve this nice crescent shape right there. And once I've done that, I'm going to swap fill and stroke again, shift X to make sure that I just have a nice little uh, stroke. You can see two point stroke. There we go. Next up, we're going to take the inner path and we're going to offset this one more time. So I'm going to go object path. I'm going to say offset path and we're going to offset this negative 40. So if we preview that, you can see it bumps it in a relatively a decent amount. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to zoom in here. And what I want to do is I just want to save two little pieces of it somewhere up here because I'm going to create a sort of highlight on my planet later. So we will use the scissors tool right here located under the eraser tool note the hot key the letter C and we're gonna go ahead and just snip out the bits we want to save so I'll say like snip it there and maybe right up there as well and then down over here we'll say let's go ahead and snip it like right there all right now it doesn't look like I did much but what I can do now is select like this whole remaining part of the circle delete it and then there's a little piece here in the middle that I should be able to delete let me zoom in on this not quite let's take the scissors let's cut it again let's cut it right there great select that little piece in the middle there we go. And now we just have these two little pieces left. And I know that looks kind of like, what are we doing here? But let me just give you a, a little peek into the future. We're going to end up coming in here and setting this to something like a 10 or 15 point stroke with rounded corners. And it's going to give us this nice sort of highlight. Now, for the sake of keeping the artwork simple, we're just going to leave it as artwork. Next, let's go ahead and create a couple new ellipses. So I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. I'm going to click a single time. We're going to begin creating the rings that wrap around our planet. So that's going to begin with a 1050 by 240 uh, ellipse. You can see kind of more of an oval than anything right and I will take this I'm going to drag it down here because we're going to work on this for just a quick second we're going to go edit copy and we're going to paste this bad boy right in front I'm going to change the width here to 990 the oval shrinks inward a little bit and I'm going to change the height here to 200 now if your ovals doing weird things and changing different sizes just try checking and unchecking the maintain proportions little icon there it should have the slash through it and then you should be able to work with width and height independently uh, but just go ahead and toggle it on and off if it's giving you any issues and once we have that we have our rings but we need to sort of tilt them on axis so select both rings and here in the angle I'm going to angle it 35 degrees this is the sort of tilt that I'm going to go with for my little planet. Now let's go ahead and create a couple moons. We're going to put a moon up in the sky over here to the top left and a moon down here to the bottom right. So let's grab our ellipse tool, click a single time. We're going to begin with the top left moon and that's going to be an 80 pixel by 80 pixel ellipse. I'm going to just move it over to where I kind of think it should go, maybe somewhere right about there. And then we're going to go object. We're going to offset this path, path, offset path, because we're eventually going to have sort of some uh, light energy rings emanating from this little, uh, this little planet. I'm going to offset it by 12 pixels and I'm going to do this two more times. Path, offset path. The, notice the outer path is selected so it's going to keep making it larger and larger. Object path and one more offset path for this guy. There we go. So that's our top left moon. It looks weird. It's going to look great once colors in it. Don't worry. We're going to click again here and I'm going to go with a 50 by 50 ellipse for our lower left planet. And this is kind of probably about where it should be. Somewhere right around there is going to work. And then nothing has to be exactly perfect here. We're going to go path, offset path. Again, 12 pixels. And we're going to do one more ring for the planet down here. So this one's going to have two rings down on the bottom right. The larger planet on the top left will have three rings. Then the next thing we'll do is we will create this sort of overlaying disk, moon, whatever it is, that's going to be a very flat shape down here on the bottom of our planet. I'm going to click a single time. This one we're going to go with 225 pixels by 225 pixels. And again, it's going to look a little weird here when I put it in place. But once it's colored and we've got some blend mode action happening, you're going to see it's, it's really going to work nicely for us. It's going to look pretty cool. Then we're going to go with a couple more smaller moons. I'm going to go with a 40 pixel by 40 pixel ellipse. And I'm going to drag this one, by the way, See how we got these transform handles and it's almost like I can't grab the shape without grabbing a transform handle. You can go view and say hide bounding box. That can be really helpful. We know what shape we want. We created the shape we want. I just want it to be easy to move around. And that moon's going to overlap up there. I'm going to hold down alter option. I'm going to duplicate this and maybe put one of them over here as well. So something kind of like that. We'll have two moons that are sort of in orbit around the, the star field, asteroid belt, whatever ring around our planet. And then we'll create two even smaller moons. Actually, we'll probably make four of them. So I'm going to go with a 20 pixel by 20 pixel shape. Let's pop one of them out here. Let's maybe drop another one somewhere over here. And then I'm going to put two of them sort of overlapping 
uh, my planet, something like out here, and maybe I'll exactly adjust them a little bit later, something like that. It's, it's going to all contribute to a very subtle effect. So now we're going to create a couple sort of twinkling stars that are in space around our planet. I'm going to use the star tool here. One of the cool things about the star tool is as you drag out, you can use the up or down arrow keys to add arms to your star or reduce arms from your star. I want to reduce down to a more of a diamond shape, but you can see the, the arms of the star aren't quite long enough, so you can hold down the command or control key, and if you pull out, it's going to lengthen those arms just like that. So I'm going to create a little star, maybe something about that size. I'm going to zoom in on this a bit here because what I want to do is grab my regular select tool, hold down command or control, and you see how all these dots appear? I'm going to use these dots to just round the edges of my star, something kind of like that. So I think that's pretty good. If the star is a little big, eh, it's probably about the right size. That, that's probably close enough to, to working for us. I'm going to take, let's make, uh, let's make four of these stars in total. So I'll put another big star over here. Let's take and put a small star up here. So I'm going to size this down a little bit. I'll lock proportions and let's say make this 25 by 25, something like that. And then we'll duplicate this and put another small star down there. And before we get to the, the big wavy sloshy stuff in the middle of our planet, let's create a couple bits of hail. And we're going to do that with the ellipse tool. I'm going to zoom in a little here for this. I'm going to just create a small ellipse. Let's go with maybe like 15 by 15, something really small, smaller than anything else we have thus far. I'm going to grab my direct selection tool. It's the white arrow right there. And I'm going to select the little anchor point on the top of this uh, little ellipse. And I'm going to hold down shift and nudge upward with my arrow key a couple times just until it looks about right. What is right? Just whatever looks right to you. And then I'm going to click and hold on my pen tool. And I'm going to select the anchor point tool. And I'm just going to click this anchor point, bam, once. And you can see what that does. We got this really cool teardrop shape that we're working with. I'm going to tilt this bad boy to 45 degrees. 45 degrees. Eh, maybe the other 45 degrees. Let's go negative 45. That's more like what I was thinking. Something like that. And we're going to duplicate and place a bunch of these around our planet. So I'm going to begin with a couple big ones. So let's go like one, two. Uh, maybe we'll put a big one over here and then another big one like there. And let's duplicate this out, and I'm going to half size this. So I'm going to say maybe make it like 25 by 25, so a really tiny little uh, hail storm looking thing, something like that. That's great. And then maybe one over there, something like that I think is cool. Maybe we should take this one and put it up over here, something like that. I think is kind of neat. Maybe I'll move this one. No, that one should probably stay right about there. This small guy should move down to here. Something like that. So we're beginning to just add some of the atmosphere that's going to be there around the planet. And again, we're going to fill all this. We're going to make it look great. We're just creating all that line art, getting all that knocked out right now. Let's uh, zoom in here. And what I want to do is create sort of the, the sloshy artwork. If I go and look at the finished stuff, you can see it's got this cool colored fill to it. Um, and what I want to do is I'm going to create the sort of big blue shape first, and then I'll worry about the pink and the sort of inner part of it. Once we create the base, we'll kind of know what we're working with. So the idea behind this is we want, and I'm going to turn the uh, bounding box back on, we sort of want our S-curve to cross the middle of the planet. That's just what I've sort of found works and looks the best. So if I know that, I know that I can sort of enter right around here, swoop down, swoop up, and exit right around that halfway point. So I'm going to use the Curvature Pen tool because it's a little easier, especially if you're new to Illustrator, to just go ahead and grab the Curvature Pen tool. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to click right out over here, and we are going to click at the bottommost point of our first sort of slosh. So the first down... Uh, down swing, if you will. So I'm going to click right there, and then we're going to come right over, and we're going to click at the topmost area of the upswing, and then we're going to choose where we exit our ellipse, something right around there. Now, here's a cool little trick. If you hold down Alter Option, you click that point, you can then just sort of lock that point in so you're not affecting the rest of your path, and then just quickly draw some sort of path out around the rest of uh, the document like this. Now, you can see when I go to join it, it's doing that weird funky thing. If you hold down Alter Option and you join, it's not going to affect it at all. So you just kind of lock that shape in. And the, the whole goal here is to create a nice swooping shape and then just envelop the whole bottom half of our planet. So just like that is what we want. We've got a great shape there. Now, to get the second wavy shape, we're just going to duplicate the shape. So hold down Alter Option. I'm just going to pull the shape straight down, maybe something like that. And maybe what I'll do is I'll push it inward a little bit. So maybe I'll push it in from the other side as well. 
And you can kind of play with it a little bit. Maybe I'll tilt it just a little. You don't want it to be radically different, but just, just different enough that when we fill it with a different color, it's going to look good. It's going to look the part. And I think that's going to work. So we've got our first two kind of swish shapes. And now we need to create sort of a wave shape up here. So you can see, if I look at the finished piece, you can see it sort of goes up and then back in and meets the, the hillside, if you will, right there. So let's go ahead and try creating this. So I'm going to go, I'm going to begin right out around... Ah, where should I begin? Maybe somewhere right around there. And you can see the ring, if I click here, you can see how it just selects the ring. So I'm going to undo a couple times here. What I'll do is I'll select both of those rings and let me collapse my properties panel for a quick second. I'm going to scroll down. There are the two rings are in my layers panel. I'm just going to shut them off for just a quick second. And we're going to get back to them in a second. So let's grab our curvature pen tool here. Let's begin right around here. And let's go up to our high point right about there. And the low point's going to be right around here. And then we're going to curve it back around something. Ooh, maybe I should come out. Maybe something more like that. And hold down Alter Option. Let's lock that in. And then we'll just bring this guy around. Something sort of like that. And then, whoop. Make sure you don't click on any other paths, and then Alter Option and join the path off. Now, that looks a little, maybe a little too radical. So the cool thing about this is we can just go ahead and say, you know what, let's just stretch it out a little bit then. Let's sort of smooth and flatten that path out. Maybe we want to tilt it a little. Maybe I want to grab my direct selection tool and select that point and just nudge it to one side or the other a little bit. Maybe nudge it down a little bit. That looks good. Let me grab the whole path. I'm going to rotate it a little bit more. There we go, something like that. I'm going to bump it over and bump it over. Maybe something, something sort of like, ah, maybe I should go, make the, I just want to make the wave a little bit bigger, and I think I'm going to compress it a little bit more. Something kind of like that. Again, I'm probably obsessing over it a little bit too much, but obsessions can be good, right? So there we go. This little teardroppy looking shape, that's the only part of this we're really interested in, and you're going to see how we're going to save all that stuff in a second. It looks a little bit like a mess. We'll make these shapes one at a time just to keep things simple for you, so I'm going to shut off the two newest bits, and we're going to go with just the big wavy shape. In fact, I should probably shut off those rings again, just for the sake of keeping it simple. Again, I want this to be, not only do I want you to see what I'm doing, it's nice if you sort of understand what's going on. So we're going to select this wavy shape here, but to have something to work with, I want to select the innermost shape. This is the shape that I want this wavy shape to be cut within, and we're going to copy it. So we're going to go edit copy, and I'm going to say, hey, you know what, edit paste in front. Paste the sucker in front. I'm going to hold down shift and select the wavy shape. And it's pretty easy from here. We're going to open up our properties panel. And I'm just going to choose the click to intersect option. Boom. And you can see our little wavy shape is perfectly cut within our ellipse. We've got our first wavy shape. Very, very cool. I'm going to turn on that bottom most shape. Now remember that inner ellipse is still copied to the clipboard. So I can just go edit paste in front one more time. And then shift click our bottom shape. And once again, click to intersect. Voila. And then last but not least, I'll turn on the little teardroppy shape. We're going to go edit paste in front. And I'm going to shift click that as well. And I'm going to intersect that as well. Now we have some other problems here because there's this whole, you know, overlapping nonsense and this bit sticking out. Now I am going to select both of those shapes. So the wavy and the teardroppy shape. And we're going to hit the little triple dot. And we're going to say, yeah, we're going to use the divide pathfinder. And then we need to ungroup this. So we'll go object and choose ungroup. And now what I can do is just select the bits I don't want. I don't want that shape, so I'm going to select it and delete it. Uh, this little bit in here I want, right, because that, that's actually a big chunk of my, uh, my little wavy thing. I do still also want this, but this little shape here, if I drag it out, you can see it's a teardrop now. That really should be a part of this shape here. How do we do that? Well, we select both of those shapes, and we can just say, look, just join them together. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to begin colorizing and bringing some life to this project Adding color to this is where I have a little bit of a goodie for you. You can use a link down in the description of this video and you can download the exact color scheme that I'm using. And it's going to be this .ai file, don't be fooled, uh, Planet Artwork Color Palette Tutvid. Now here's how you actually get these colors into Illustrator. You can do it through the swatches panel. In fact, let's do it through the swatches panel to keep it simple for everybody. Window, we go swatches. And with your swatches panel open, we're going to hit the little flyout menu in the top corner and say open swatch library, other library, and navigate to where on your hard drive that file is, select it, choose open, and you can see you're going to have this whole mess open up. Now the only important part of it is this little folder down here. The cool thing about this is you click on the folder and boom, it brings it into your main swatches panel. This is everything we need for this. I can just close out that original thing. In fact, I can close this out because if I select a piece of artwork and then I go to fill, 
all those swatches are now here in my fill panel within the appearance section of the new properties panel. So let's start easy. Let's go with the moon up here in the top corner, add some color to this bad boy. So let's select it. We're going to go fill. And I want this to be a gradient that runs yellow to green using these first two colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, look, fill this with a gradient number one, and then we'll choose gradient options. Of course, it's going to open our gradient panel. And then I can come over and open my swatches panel and I can see, yeah, go ahead and swap the white with yellow and the black with green. Notice it's not fully updating. If I click the shape, boom, there we go. We've got an update. And then what I'll go ahead and do is change the angle. Let's try 90 degrees. I want it to go green to yellow. So I could either say negative 90 degrees or you can use the little reverse gradient button. And there you go. It does exactly what we want it to do. I'm going to close out the gradient panel for a quick second. I'm going to select stroke and we'll just select the slash to get rid of the stroke. Now, once we've done that, we can just select all of the rings for this and grab our eyedropper tool and sample that center gradient. Now, this isn't rotating the gradient upright, the 90 degrees that we want, but we can go right in here to our gradient options and right out of the gate, we know we reverse the gradient, so we can just go 90 degrees, there we go. Now, it doesn't look very good. It looks difficult to see the rings, that's fine. We're gonna come over here to opacity and we're gonna set each of the rings opacity to 15%. And you can see we've got this really cool effect now of this moon floating and the, almost like a colored glow emanating from it. We haven't used any effects. It's just a gradient layered on and reduced opacity is giving us that effect. So let's come down here a little bit faster and do this lower moon. So with this guy down here, we're going to go fill. We're going to fill this with a gradient as well. So let's go black to white gradient. I'm going to open gradient options. I'll move the gradient panel over and we're going to go with a pink to orange gradient here. So I'll drag the pink in to replace white and drag the orange in to replace black. And then I'll just click the gradient out here. We get an update. And here I know I want the pinkish color on the bottom. So we're going to go 90 degrees. There we have it. I'll close out the gradient dialog box. I'll select stroke once more, get rid of the stroke. We'll select both of our outer rings, easy, and grab the eyedropper tool, sample that inner color. Once more, we've got to go back and just rotate those guys upward as well to 90 degrees. I'll close that out and set these rings both to 15% opacity as well. And just like that, we've colorized both of the little planets that will go on either side of our large planet. So next up, let's tackle the large moon that's going to float in front of the planet here. And we'll do kind of the same little routine. In fact, I'll just preemptively get rid of the stroke. We know we're not going to need it. We'll go to fill. Let's give it a gradient. Here, we're going to use the next colors in line. That's that bluish, purplish color and the pink for our gradient. So I'll go gradient options, bring the gradient panel down here so I can see all of what I'm doing. And let's drag the blue in to replace the white and drag the pink in over on this side. Let's set the angle to like 135. I want this to be on a bit of an angle like that where it's this sort of beginning from the top left and running to the bottom right, sort of like that. That looks good. I can close out the gradient panel. I'm gonna open up my opacity panel because we're gonna make some changes to this. We're gonna set this to color dodge. It's gonna give us this kind of extreme color effect and it's going to change as we add colors to our planet underneath. In fact, we may come back to this later and decide to reduce opacity a little bit, maybe change that blend mode. But for now, we're gonna live with color dodge at this 135 degree gradient angle. Let's go ahead and select our frontmost wave shape. So this is the wave shape at the bottom. Again, we'll dump the stroke. I'm gonna to go to fill. I'm going to fill it with a black to white gradient, open up the gradient panel. We're now going to drag a light pink and a darker pink in. So sort of the next two colors in line. Let's go ahead with that. Drag the light pink in and drag the darker pink just like so. And for this, I'm going to change the angle. Let's go with 90 degrees. You can see the, the light pink is on the bottom. We don't want that. We'll just reverse the gradient real quick. And basically you want to play with this gradient slider until you get the amount of almost glow that you want. In fact, we may want this to be on a slight tilt. We could try like 80 degrees. 80 degrees is not the right direction. Let's go 100 degrees, something like that. That looks pretty good. And we can just kind of compress the, the lightened edge up to the actual edge, something like that. So about 100 degrees for the gradient. And I just slid and filled a lot more of the heavy pink into the bottom. Now you can see that our moon here on the bottom is not looking so good. And that's because it's being covered by this wave. What we're going to do is we're going to be restacking a lot of this artwork as we create it so it all looks right. In the case of this, we would need to bring this to the front. So I would right click and choose arrange and we could choose bring to the front. Really what you should do is bring it forward as forward as it needs to be. But just for the sake of getting it done, we can just bring it forward. And you can see the effect that we're getting here. It's, it's a very interesting little effect. Um, and as we build out the, the shapes around it, this gradient moon shape is going to interact with the colors in our planet. But at this point, that's neither here nor there. So let's select the large wave shape. And once more, we'll just dump the stroke. I'm gonna say, give me a fill. Let's go with a gradient. We already have our gradient panel open and I'm going to drag the sort of light cyan and bluish color out and drop them in place. So let's go light cyan for white 
and the more heavy thick blue for black and then we'll come down here and once more let's try setting this maybe we'll go 100 degrees and we'll reverse the gradient I think 100 degrees works well for this sort of wave that we've created it might be slightly different for whatever wave you create but you know work with it finesse it until it looks right now obviously this doesn't look good because we're covering up the pink if we go to object arrange which is the same as right clicking on the artwork and going arrange it's really helpful to know these two little hotkeys here in Illustrator command or control and the left or right bracket keys they will they will allow you to swing your artwork around so I'm just going to begin using command or control and the left or right bracket keys and I'm going to start syncing artwork or bringing artwork up to the fore depending on what I'm doing as I was moving that path down I had to move it quite uh, quite a ways down and the reason that was was because we have a lot of extra little bits of path sort of residual junk left behind from when we created our pathfinders to create these wave shapes so let's real quick shut off these shapes and what I'm going to do to address those shapes I can't even really see what they are because right now we're using white stroke and we have white thumbnails in our layers panel so I can't see for instance if this is a little tiny piece of path which well I can see it is once I select it but I don't know beforehand so in order to combat that I am going to select all the white strokes using the magic wand tool let's go ahead and select all the white strokes and I'm going to change the white color to I don't know maybe like yellow or something that I can still see above this background right and when I do that you can see in my layers panel I'm going to collapse properties for a quick second this is just the most boring housekeeping junk you've ever seen right all these little like nibs of path so what I can do is I can hold down shift and just select all these guys and just delete them wholesale we don't need these now and there you have it it's all good we can turn our other shapes back on is it annoying yeah but it's just sometimes part of working in illustrator uh, at least it is for me all right let's go ahead and grab our little teardrop shape here because I can see where that is now that we've cleaned up all the excess of layers and honestly because everything is colored yellow I'll drag this up to the top and we're going to fill this using that same gradient so it's as simple as grabbing the eyedropper tool and just selecting that gradient there we have it now not quite what we want because that looks pretty bad so I'll select the shape and you can see our gradient panel isn't updating well that's because we have the stroke forward and right now there's no strokes it's saying like should I add the gradient to the stroke no 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 we want to work on the fill so I'm gonna select the fill the first thing I want is I really want the dark blue the shadow if you will to be against our current wave so I can use the gradient tool and I can try drawing the gradient see how that works I drew it the wrong direction of course because that's you always draw it the wrong direction there we go something like that and then I could adjust and say no bring more of that teal color in and then I could more specifically adjust over here and use my up or down arrow keys with the with the gradient angle something like so and I could really play with this and decide do I want more blue there for the shadow do I want to bring back and force the shadow to only live along sort of that ridge line something like that and I think that looks pretty good that gives our uh, our little shape a bit of dimension in fact I may select the big blue wave shape and increase the amount of blue coming up from the bottom just to help it match with our wave a little bit then I would select the wave and say you know what, retract some of that blue a little just to help the shadows line up and just make it look like it all belongs together now this moon with the color dodges not being shown any love because you can see how it's behind all these colors so we could drag it up but let's use that hot key that we just learned command and the left bracket key and boom we bump that way up to the top right above everything looking good let's hide the gradient for a quick second here let's work with some uh, other colors we're going to take our little crescent overlay and we are going to make this a white shine so I'm going to hit shift x to swap foreground and background and right away it's a shine it needs to be on top of everything so let's bring it all the way up to the top you can see we can't even see this in our layers panel so this is going to be a candidate for going arrange and just bring this bad boy right to the front there it is now at the top of our layer stack well, of course we want to fill it with white so we'll select fill and just select the white right there and what I'm gonna do is click on opacity we're gonna set this to overlay and set this blend mode to I don't know let's go like 20% while we're adding shines and stuff let's go all the way down let's select that low yellow shape right let's turn that bad boy on select him and we're gonna go object arrange and bring this one all the way up to the front all right there it is low yellow we're gonna fill this with a gradient as well so I'm just gonna dump the stroke and let's go fill let's fill it with a black to white gradient it's gonna cover everything up no worries we're gonna go gradient options here we want to drag in these yellow color swatches here so we're gonna go with the light yellow and say yep drop that where the white is and then a darker yellow right there where the black is and then I think I'm gonna set this to like 135 degrees we, I think we want the lighter yellow up there on the top so we'll just go ahead and reverse this gradient and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the light yellow color stop and we're gonna set the opacity to 0% so you can see what we're getting we're getting this uh, almost a faded hazy effect I'm gonna to try to kick this up a couple notches here by going to the opacity and let's try setting this to hard light 
and maybe drop the opacity to like 80%, something like that. And then we really need to rein this yellow in. There's way too much yellow. It may need to be a little bit of a steeper angle. Let's go like 100, not 150 degrees, a little bit of a less steep angle of about a 115. That looks good. And then I want to really just compress the yellow back in. I just want there to be a bit of a yellow glow sort of along the bottom. See how the yellow is still hazing up there? So we'll maybe set this to like 105, see if that helps swing it around a little bit more, something like that. We'll bring that transparency back in even more to really contain it down there on the bottom of our planet. Something sort of like, you know, somewhere right around there. I could probably bring it back to about 110 or so. Yeah, that looks about right. We're just building that nice, subtle, glowing edge. The, the success is in the details. There we go. Something like that I think is going to work for us. And next, what we want to do is move down and select that base shape. I'm going to turn it on, select it, and I want to bring it just to the four so we can really get a look at it. I'm going to go object, arrange, and just bring it all the way up to the front. We are going to have to send it back in a little bit, but let's just work with it here. I'm going to get rid of the stroke. We are also going to give this a gradient as if that's not expected at this point. And I'm going to use a couple of these light pink colors here. So let's go with these two right here. And drag the light pink down, replace white, drag the pinkier pink down, and replace black. And I think what I'll do here is swing this around. I want this pale pink to be in the bottom corner. So let's go ahead and try setting this to 135. And that, that's probably about perfect. We might be able to push it a little bit in either direction, but 135 is looking good for us. I'm going to select the pale pink, and we're going to knock the opacity down to 0%. But I'm going to go ahead and open up opacity and set this to hard light and then reduce the opacity to 55%. Now, we're starting to cook with some fire. You're starting to see how the shape is building out the way we want it to be built out. Now, this is not the shine. This is the base. So we want to take this and drag it beneath all of our waviness. So we can do that manually or we can just send it down using our hotkey, just something kind of like that. I want to bring it way down, though. So I might send this all the way to the back by just going object arrange. Send this guy to the back. There's really nothing that's going to need to be behind it. After all, it is our base. Next, what we'll do is we will select the bit that's going to make up the outer sort of ring of the planet. Not the big ring that wraps the planet, but just this little guy in here. In fact, I might be able to go down and just select both of these ellipses just like that. And I'm going to swap the fill and the stroke real quick just so we can really get an idea of what's about to happen. You can see it doesn't look quite so natural. We're going to use the Pathfinder and just minus front, though, and punch a hole in the middle, leaving us with this nice border. I'm going to open up the fill. We don't actually need a gradient here, shockingly. We'll just go ahead and give this like a nice pale pink color like that. We'll go to our Opacity option here, set this to Overlay. We can always reduce the opacity a little bit if we think maybe it's a little too strong up here, something like that. I can select the Compound Path here. I can reduce Opacity. Let's knock it down to like 50%, see what that looks like. And we can always come back later, bump it up a little if it needs to be, you know, spruced up and made made a little more poppy. While we're down here at the bottom of the layers panel, let's grab our shine option, select that, bring it all the way to the front. So we'll go uh, arrange, bring to front. Once more, we'll just swap the fill and the stroke again, just to illustrate what we're doing here. We're going to go with a simple white to white gradient. So we'll say, give me a black to white gradient. We'll double click here on black and we'll just make this white. I will come down here and reduce the opacity to 0% of one of the color stops. And then I'm going to set it to the 135 angle. You can see angle the wrong way. No problem. Just reverse that gradient. Let's set this to the blend mode of overlay and we'll reduce this opacity down to like 40 45 percent something like that i'm going with 40 percent that looks good and let's select both of these the little moons that are going to be on top of our ring here but with these selected i am going to use my eyedropper tool the eyedropper tool and i'm going to sample the gradient off of this color dodge moon just like that and you can see it's this bizarre pink and blue uh, but what we want is we want the pink to be at the bottom. So let's go ahead. I believe this would be negative 90. There we go. You can see set that pink right down there to the bottom. And the key with these little moons is we almost want them to fade off into nothingness. So we're going to select the blue color stop. I still have both moons selected. And we're going to set the opacity of the blue to like 10%. It's going to give us more of a planet-like effect. You can see it's a really cool little thing. We're not even using blend modes. Uh, but it's just a nice little thing. Um, and right there where I said we're not we're not using blend mode, blend modes to get this effect, but I still think I am going to in the end use a blend mode. We would probably set this to something like screen again because we're going to be working on our ring here in a minute, and we do want it to interact with the ring a little bit. Both the moons we want to interact with that ring. So we can select both uh, pieces of the ring. Again, like we did for the outer ring of the planet, let's just swap the fill and the stroke to really see what we've got going on here. 
Uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll go object arrange, bring it to the front just so we can really see it all. I'm going to go minus front down here in the pathfinder and it's going to punch that hole in the middle and give us an actual ring shape. And what we need to do here is create another gradient. So we're going to go fill, let's just say black to white gradient. And I'm going to use the gray and the pink or that almost like bluish gray, slate gray, whatever you want to call it and pink. I'm going to drag the slate gray over the white stop and the pinky salmon color over the darker stop. And then we're going to set this. Let's try setting this to 135. It's the wrong orientation. So let's just swap the gradient. A 135 isn't quite right. So let's try adjusting it a little bit. It's very close. Maybe we go with like 130. I think 130 might be more perfect. Let's increase the amount of pink in our gradient, something like that. When we come over here to opacity and choose a blend mode, something like color dodge is almost entirely going to drop that color out. We really just don't want the ring that's supposed to be behind the planet, and we'll mask that out in a second. We really don't want that sort of stealing the show, so to speak. We want the ring almost to appear as though it fades off as it heads back there. Let's just deselect this. We need to go ahead and create a nice mask that's going to kind of knock away a bunch of where the ring goes behind the planet. So here's where we will select, like, maybe the base. Let's just select our base shape. We just want a nice big ellipse like that and copy it. Command or Control C, or you can just go Edit Copy. We're going to select on our ring again. And here, if we select opacity, we have this open slot, which if we double click, it's going to add a mask. Well, I want to unclip the mask because I want to use my pasted in mask that, that I'm about to paste in to hide only one part of this. So I'm going to go edit, paste in front. We're now in clipping mask mode, by the way, if you saw that change happen. You can see there's an opacity mask. It's not really doing anything uh, because we want to fill it with solid black. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, give me the solid color. I can close my color panel. I don't need that. Just double click to get my color picker and say, yeah, give me a, just a nice solid black there. Now, one of the things you're seeing on the opacity mask is that it's not black. It's actually a, a like a medium gray. The reason that's happening is because the, we had reduced the opacity of the base and that opacity is carrying through. So it is black, but black at 55% opacity. So we're going to bump that back up to 100. Now, this is great, except for the fact that the ring in front of the planet is also gone. How do we change that? Well, we can do a couple things. Probably the fastest thing is just grab the pen tool and create a really quick path over the front side of the, uh, the, the shape. And what we would do is just select both of these shapes. Once we have them both selected, it's both of the mask shapes. We would use the pathfinder here and just subtract or minus the front. So we now only have this back half of the planet covered with the mask, therefore allowing the front ring to be revealed as it swings across the face of the planet. Now, remember, the planet is a glass planet. So this mask actually probably shouldn't be at an opacity of 100%. We should be able to see the faintest little bit of ring behind it. So let's go ahead and set the opacity to something maybe more like 80 See that? We just get a nice, subtle ring behind the planet. That's great. And I'm going to go window and pop open to the transparency panel and get back to my normal editing mode by clicking on the artwork. You can see all of our layers are restored. I can close out transparency. And we have the makings of a nice ring that will be swinging around our planet. Very, very cool. I think I want to intensify the ring so we can select it and I'm going to duplicate it by going edit copy and then just a simple edit paste in front. I think that's going to be too much. You can see that's that's really intense. What I think I'm going to do is select this layer and I'm going to edit the gradient. So maybe we'll make this even darker because it's a global color. It's going to allow us to work with tint, but I think I would just want to go to like a, a much darker color, much closer to black, something like that. And if I go to my color editor, I can just make it solid black, which means it won't really appear much back there. And I can just more heavily influence the ring so really this pink is only intensifying like the front third if you will of the ring if I shut that off you can see we don't even really need to worry about the pink ever getting back and influencing the back side of the ring because remember we have this layer set to color dodge so it's just dropping out a lot of those really dark colors so this gradient works well for us for something like that we could even try changing it maybe to something like screen the screen blend mode see what that does for us that's actually kind of cool I think I kind of dig that and one last thing not to obsess over this too much we can try reducing the opacity also back there there. Maybe drop it all the way to zero and we can see, yeah, that's that actually might be the best of the best. Uh, just doing something like that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and create a little shadow for our ring that would be cast on our glass orb here. So I'm going to select the compound path that we just created. Remember, we got this crazy gradient and opacity blend mode nonsense going on here. I'm just going to I'm going to ignore that for a second. We're going to go edit copy and we're going to paste this in front and I'm going to nudge it downward. So let's just use our arrow keys and just nudge it down something, you know, just something that you think is about right. And then what we'll do, we'll come back real quick. We're going to set this to a normal blend mode. I want to move into the mask because we actually only obviously want this to be the, the bottom part of the planet here to be masked because we want to get rid of the, the double ring everywhere else, right? So let's go back into 
the mask. And what I'll do is I'll select that mask. We don't need it. I can just delete it. And I'm going to open up my transparency panel again to make it a little easier to move back and forth between our mask mode and, and regular artwork editing mode. And what I want to do is I want to, I think I'm just going to clip this sort of to within the inner circle. So maybe I'll, I'll grab like our shine because that's, oh no, our shine's the whole thing. There's the lower yellow. Lower yellow is the inner circle. I'll select that. I'll copy it. Command or Control C. And let's enter back into our mask. Select the mask there. And I'm going to paste it in place by going edit paste in front. And we have this weird gradient and the opacity is messed up. So let's set the opacity back to 100. Let's set it to a normal blend mode. And let's just set the fill to, uh, let's go with white. Let's set it to white. And of course, this doesn't do us much good because the whole mask is white. So we need to just check on clip. And it's going to clip everything around the selection we have. So now we have just this nice bit of pink showing through. That's great. And I can select my normal artwork thumbnail to get back to regular editing mode. Close my transparency panel. And here what I'll do is I'll probably change the blend mode of the artwork. Let's try setting it to maybe multiply. And then to make it even more subtle, let's just drop the opacity to like 25%. Just a super, super subtle little shadow there. Maybe 25% is even too much. Let's go like 15%. Something like that. I'm going to close the gradient panel for a quick second here. I'm going to select both of these little highlights. Now, you can see we're just selecting the shine because that's what's on top. Here they are, way down by the bottom. I can select them both. And let's just immediately move them to the front. Bring them to the front. Great. So now they're all the way up here in front. We will set the stroke to white. We do want it to be white. And I want the stroke itself to be, I don't know, let's go like 20 points. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to click on the word stroke. Let's give these a round cap. Remember, we sort of went over this before. And then I'll just knock the opacity down to like 85%. Next, what we'll do is we'll select all of the star and raindrop shapes. It's not the little circles, but just the stars and raindrops. I'm holding down shift as I drag these selections. And voila, there we go, something like that. Whoop, I don't want to select that bottommost ring. And I'm going to flip the fill and stroke color just like that. And you could go with either a very cyan blue or white. I think I'm going to go with a, a cyan color. And I'm going to set the blend mode here to, let's try overlay and see what that looks like. I do want these to be pretty subtle. Now what we'll do is we will select our little moons left. And the easiest way to do that, because you can see those two are probably underneath some shines and things, just use the magic wand tool and select them. But notice when we do that, that it selects the, the stroke that we have have as our little highlight. That's not going to work. Check this out. You can double click on the magic wand and specify what else it selects. So we can say, look, I just want to select stuff not that has the same fill color. I don't care about fill. Give me the stuff that has the same stroke color. Boom. And we just got those four little moons. Great. I am going to sample the green yellow gradient from the top planet here, just like that. And I'm going to zoom in so we can really get a good look at these. I'm going to select fill. We're going to open up our gradient options again. We're going to negative 90 this and I'm overthinking it. It should be a regular, regular 90. We'll select the yellow color stop change the opacity to 0%, and I can close out that gradient panel for a quick second. I'm going to open up opacity, and I'm going to try setting this to, like, color dodge. You can see it's going to take that greenish color, and it's going to work with it really interestingly over the background. It looks blue, but then there's, like, a slight hazy green-yellow color that it sort of fades to, and then over our little moon planetary object, it's different than that. So that's pretty neat. Now, the last thing that we want to do before we wrap this up, we'll zoom right in. I want to grab this moon here, and we're going to add, use this to add texture to the wavy areas. And we're going to do it by duplicating a bunch of them. So I'm going to alter option, drag it over the, the wavy area, but you can see we can't see it because it's buried way down the layer order. So we'll go object arrange and just bring this guy to the front. But before I go duplicating this 100 times, I'm going to go opacity, and I'm going to change this from color dodge to screen. There we go, something like that. It's an important step for what we're about to do. Now I'm just simply going to alter option, drag a bunch of this a little circle out. You could convert this to a symbol and use symbol sprayers and resizers and all kinds of stuff. Honestly, I've always found that process really wonky and kind of a pain in the neck. All right, so now we need to select all these shapes. How do we do that? Well, we can use the magic wand as well, but the problem is this fill is the same as the fill of all the other moons that we just created. So we can double click again on the magic wand and say, look, select not only stuff that is the same fill color, we don't care about stroke color right now, but stuff that has the same blending mode. Remember, all these have the screen blend mode, whereas the four moons outside of this have the color dodge blend mode. So I can say, yep, give me that. I'm simply going to alt or option, drag a copy of this over. I'm going to go view and make sure I turn my bounding box back on. I'm going to make this quite a bit smaller. So now we've got all these little tiny dots and I'm going to begin selecting these and just drag them around you know, move them wherever they have to move so they're not overlapping or looking funky or anything like that. And last but not least, I'll select a couple more of them, maybe something like that, and I will alter option drag these over, and I'm going to make these a bit bigger. 
and let's move this so it's kind of like that. And then what I'll do is I'll just select and kind of move these into place. And it looks a little over the top, and maybe it is. I might have I might have created a few too many of them. Once more here, I want to use the magic wand. I want to select all these bad boys, and I'm going to go object group just to group them up so we don't have a thousand of these layers creating this effect, right? And I'm simply going to reduce the opacity to like 15%. So there's a lot of them, but it's a very subtle texture. In fact, 15 might be a little too low. Let's try like 25%, something like that. There we go, something like that. So we just have a nice like bubbly texture for the fill that we've placed within that planet as well. And that's really it. We've created this planet right here in Adobe Illustrator. And well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you create that glass illustration effect in Adobe Illustrator. Now, before you go, if you did create it, I would love to see it. The best way to share it with me is to upload it to Instagram and tag me in the actual image. I don't need some elaborate crazy shout out. If you want to put it there, fine. It's great. I, I love it. But I, it, it, if you tag me in the photo, it just ensures that it goes to like my tag photo section. So even if I see it, you know, a week or two weeks from now, it doesn't get lost in my notifications. That's what I'm trying to say. It's the best way for me to be able to check it out. And I try to like and comment on everything that people make and tag me in um, over there on Instagram. So I would absolutely love to see it. My Instagram handle is at tutvid. I'd love to see it over there. And for all of the super cool techniques, masking, blend modes, you name it, that we covered in this Adobe Illustrator tutorial, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.